Welcome to Advent Reflection for Thursday, 23rd of December, brought to you by Jonathan Rook. An opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite you into the stillness of our hearts this morning, and we welcome your presence among us. Open our hearts and minds to what you have to say to us through prayers, through the readings and through the thoughts that we offer you today. Amen. Our reading is from Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and he's lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary is so impressive. For me, she is the standout character in the New Testament. Why? Because she hears God, she receives what God has to offer her, and she does her work for him faithfully. Here we find Mary understanding that God's values are different to the values of the world. She's declaring that God is coming to fulfil his ancient promises and she's joyful that he's coming into our lives to change the way we live and love each other. Why is she a standout character? Because here we see someone who trusts God. She's a young girl, a peasant. The King James Version calls her a handmaiden which some commentators say is a translation of a word meaning not much more than a slave. She is the poor, lowly, she's voiceless. She is so ordinary, but she is chosen. And when God asks her to follow him, she accepts. More than this, she responds open-heartedly, actively. And at this stage in her life, with overflowing genuine joy and wonder. She goes on to sing that God is coming to his people and reassure us that God is interested in those who are humiliated by life, in those who endure poverty, in those who are sidelined. And we know that Jesus will go on to spend time with the lepers, the sinners, the Samaritans, the tax collectors, with all those who do not feel valued, those forgotten, those on the edge, Jesus seeks them out. Jesus speaks his great words on the Sermon of the Mount, continuing Mary's song of God's values. We call these the Beatitudes. He talks of God's love, his mercy, his faithfulness to the humble, the suffering and the broken. It is joyful. It is revolutionary. It is unsettling. It is God's love. Why is she a standout character? Because Mary says yes to God. And her yes opens up the way for God's love to come to all of us. Mary sets an example. She makes a choice to work with God. David Fleming writes, The choices we make in our daily life in this world 
push us away from God or draw us closer to him. Like Mary, can we choose what better leads to God's deepening life in us and continue as a church to sing her song? Let us pray. O Lord, our God, keep us watchful and keep us faithful, that when he comes, he will find us active and not sleeping. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting, ready to receive the gift of his Son. Amen. And the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. <laughs>